This is an interesting question. So we're asked to solve the linear Diophantine equation 14x minus 21y add 18z equals 25, which is a Diophantine equation with three variables. We're going to do two methods to solve this. Uh, the first method that we're going to do is a general method. The second method works only for certain types of linear Diophantine equations, but it uses modulo maths and it's actually quite fun. So let's do the first one. How are we going to start this? Well, what we need to do is we need to reduce the three variable equation to a two variable equation and then we can solve the two variable Diophantine equation um, in, in a more rigorous way. So let's just take out the seven here and you can and you can do it with any of the factors. So that's two X minus three Y add 18 Z equals 25. All I've done is I've taken the seven out of this bit here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let W equal two X minus three Y. Okay, and what that's gonna do is that's going to give us 7w add 18z equals 25, which is now a Diophantine equation in two variables. And by the way, uh, if um, you haven't watched our video solving linear Diophantine equations using Euclid's algorithm, please go and watch that. The link is in the description to this video because that will explain what I'm about to do in, in more detail. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find the GCD of 7 and 18 in order to solve this, which clearly is 1. But anyway, let's go through the motions because they could have been two more complicated numbers. So what we need to do is we need to go 18 equals 7 times 2, add 4. Then we move the 7 here. 7 equals move the 4 here. 4 times 1, add 3. And then we go uh, 4 equals 3 times 1, add 1. And the fact that the remainder here is 1 means that the GCD of 7 and 18 is 1 which we knew anyway. Right, once we have this equation here, we can move it around to be one equals four minus three times one. And then we can replace the three here. So that'd be one equals four minus seven minus four times one times one, i.e. one equals four times two minus seven, which I know again is obvious, but we have to go through this procedure in order to get the correct uh, equation. And then what we do from this equation here is we replace four by 18 minus seven times two. So one equals 18 minus seven times two times two minus seven, i.e. one equals 18 times two minus seven times five. Okay, now what we want to do is we just want to compare this equation here to this equation here. So what we have here is we have that 7 times minus 5 add 18 times 2 equals 1. So multiplying everything by 25, we get 7 times minus 125 add 18 times 50 equals 25. And therefore, comparing that to that, we know that one particular solution is w equals minus 125 and z equals 50. Okay, so therefore the general solution, again described in the, uh, the video, um, which uh, where there's a link in the description to this video, um, that means that the general solution is minus 125 add 18 times s, and we get the 18 from there, and the general solution for z is 50 minus 7s, where we get the seven from there. So these are two general solutions. Now what we need to do is we need to solve for w. And remember up here we had w is 2x minus 3y. So let's have a look. Uh, so we have uh, 2x minus 3y equals w, which equals minus 125 add 18s. Well, first of all, let's solve 2x minus 3y equals 1. Uh, and by inspection, we can see that that would be 2 times 2 minus 3 times 1 equals 1. So therefore, if we compare this equation and this equation, it would be 2 times 2 of these minus 125 add S minus 3 times minus 125 add 18s equals minus 125 add 18s. And so therefore we know 
Oh, sorry, that there's a, a times two there. Two times. Sorry, my apologies, because there's a two there. And so therefore, we know that a specific solution of this is x equals minus 250 add 36 s just from there and we know that y a specific solution is y equals minus 125 add 18 s okay so that's the specific solution so therefore the general solution would be x equals minus 250 add 36 s add 3 t oh, sorry minus 3 t because uh, there's the minus and this one here would be minus 2t from here. And so we now have our general solution. Z is 50 minus 7s. X is minus 250 add 36s minus 3t. And Y is minus 125 add 18s minus 2t for any s and t contained in the integers. And that is the solution to the Diophantine equation. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to do it another way um, because, let's just have a quick look here, because we can see common factors between 14 and 21, well they are both multiples of 3, um, 21 and 18, uh, sorry, 14 and 21 multiples of 7, 21 and 18 are multiples of 3, and 14 and 18 are both multiples of 2, what we can do is we can do it a slightly different way using modular math. So let's just rewrite the question. 14x minus 21y add 18z equals 25. Okay, now this only works if you have pairs of coefficients which are factors. So let's have a look at mod 2. Let's just take mod 2 of this whole thing. Well, 14 mod 2 is 0, so that's 0x. Uh, minus 21, that's minus uh, 1y. Add 18, well mod 2, 18 mod 2 is 0, Z, and 25 mod 2 is 1. So we basically have that Y equals minus 1, equals minus 1, mod 2, or Y equals 1, mod 2, i.e. Y equals 2Q, add 1 for some Q. Now let's look mod 3 at the entire uh, equation here. And well, so 14 mod 3 is 2. 14 is 2 mod 3, so that's 2x minus, well, 21 is 0 mod 3, and 18 is 0 mod 3, and 25 is 1. So we have that 2x equals 1 mod 3, i.e., well, 2 times uh, x would be, if x is 2, then 2 times 2 is equal to 1 mod 3, i.e., x equals 2 mod 3, i.e. x equals um, 3p add 2 for some p containing the integers. And now if we look at mod 7, we can get, well, 14x is 0x, 21y is 0y, and 18z is 4z equals 4, i.e. we have 4z equals 4 mod 7, or z equals 1 mod 7, i.e. z equals 7r add 1 for some r integer. Now what we can do is we can put these back into the equation here, and what we get is 14 3p add 2 minus 21 times y, 2q add 1, uh, add 18z, which is 7r add 1, equals 25. And then when we expand all this out, we get 42p add 28 minus 42q minus 21, add uh, 126r add 18 equals 25, i.e. 42p minus 42q add 126r equals uh, 28 minus 21, add 18, and take that 25, 0. Okay, so dividing through by 42, we get p minus q add 3r equals 0. And so therefore, we can say that p equals q minus 3r. And in x here, we can replace 
the P by Q minus 3R, which will then give us our solution. So we have our solution, which is X equals 3Q minus 9R add 2. All I've done is I've replaced the P by Q minus 3R in that. Y equals, where's Y gone? A 2Q add 1. And Z equals 7R add 1. This is also a solution to the uh, linear Diophantine equation. Now you might think, well hang on a sec, this is completely different from the solution that we just found here. X and Y being here and Z being 50 minus 7S. Well it is, but if you put, if they will still give the same solutions. And if we actually have a look here, I've just done a little table here. So this was the first method we used with S and T. And if we just put random values in for S and T here, we get these values for x, y, and z. And when we put that in as 14x minus 21y at 18z, obviously we get 25. If we put the same values in for q and r, we obviously will get different values of x and y. But the answer is still the same. If we just, for example, just take this top answer where x equals minus 250, y equals minus 125, and z equals 50, does give us 25. Putting s equals 0 and t equals 0, in order to get the answer, we would have to put Q equals minus 63 and R equals 7 in the second method, but we still get the same solution. There are an infinite number of solutions, but by putting various Q and R in or various S and T in, we will get the entire set of solutions to this linear Diophantine equation in three variables. Okay, I hope that was clear. Um, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the Gresty Academy YouTube channel.